Hello and welcome. So on Sundays, I was kind of thinking we could do some coding questions, kind of interview question style stuff. So I jumped on Hacker Rank and pulled off a question that they had labeled easy so that we could solve it a couple different ways. Now, what it's called is diagonal difference. So diagonal difference takes a matrix, which is an array of arrays. A matrix kind of looks like this. So here's a three by three matrix. So what happens is there are three pieces in each array and there needs to be three arrays. But that makes it three by three as a square matrix. Now what it looks like in JavaScript is an array within an array. So we have this array that surrounds the entirety of it. Then we'll have position one, which is this array, position two, which is this array, and position three, which is this array. Inside there, they each have three elements and that's how we're able to make them into a nice square matrix like we have here. So what do we wanna find? The diagonal difference, meaning we want from the left to the right to be one diagonal. So diag one would add 11, five, and negative 12. Now diag two would add four, five, and 10. And to get the difference, we want the absolute difference, we would do something like this. We'd have return math.absolute with one of the diagonals subtracted from one of the other diagonals. And I hard coded all of this so we could walk through it before we do a real solution. Now this isn't a real solution because it only solves a three by three matrix. It does not solve any other matrix that could be passed in. But to solve this three by three matrix by hard coding, this is what we would do. We want to let two different diags, I'm calling them diag one and diag two, I initialize them to zero because that's the value before they start counting upward. Now diag one is going to be plus equaled everything that it needs to add. So position zero here would be your first array and position zero within there would be your first number, which means you start here. Then position one will be our second array here and position one's our second number, then three and three. And we see we have 11, five and 12, meaning 11 plus five plus 12, we should get the number four and let's console.log it. We have the number four that came up. Now, we have the second one, but we need that one to go from right to left. We need it to start at four. What we're doing is we're selecting the first array, but what's that position two? Zero, one, two, it starts at four. So it starts there, then we'll go to array one, which is the second array at position one is five, and array two at position zero is 10. Let's see what we got there, 19. So. 19 and four, what is the difference? 15, and our answer is 15 at the end here. That's what's being returned from the function. Now, I made this diagonal difference here. Instead of just being a three by three, I added a fourth element to each one of it, and then I added a fourth array right here. So now we have an array, let me show you, like so. Oh, it really doesn't want me to do that. All right, let me just move over. Okay, so we have our outside array and then we have arrays holding four pieces and we have one, two, three, four of them. But we're only set up to do this. So we should get the same answer since I still kept 11, two, four, four, five, six, and 10, eight, 12. And we do get the same answer if we uncomment, 15. So it just did the three by three and doesn't give us the proper answer for this. So let's solve that programmatically. I'm going to comment this all out and we could start right here in our function, diagonal difference array. We're going to do this two different ways. First, we're going to use a loop and then I want to do a little introduction to recursion where we'll use a helper function to make recursion a little bit easier to begin with. So let's let diag one equal zero. Diag two is also going to equal zero. 
And now we only have one factor that won't work in my for loop, and that is my descending value that I'm doing in diag two, where we start at two and go to zero. See, I can make a for loop that goes from zero to two, or goes from two to zero on this array, but I can't make a for loop doing both. So I want to initiate a value at the length of the array minus one. Because the length of this the length of this array, this three piece array, is three. But if we went to three in our matrix, we go position zero, one, two, three, and we'd have an undefined value. So let's make a new let called ARR length, like so. And that's going to equal ARR dot length minus one. All right, so now we have, in this case, this would say two, this right here, and in this case, this would say three right here. So we have a variable that's going to respond to the matrix. Let's start our for loop. So for let i equal zero, when i is less than arr dot length, then i plus plus. So we'll iterate i upwards every time we go through this for loop. And now we'll have diag one. Now diag one is going to plus equal like we were doing up here. The first piece we want is zero, zero. So diag one will take arr at i, which starts at zero, and i again, which is still at zero. Okay, now we need diag two to do something. Diag two is going to start on the same array. So array of i, which is zero, but we need the number two which we're getting from here, the array.length. So if we're passing in a matrix of a three by three array, we're having array.length minus one, meaning instead of three, the number is two. So grab that, and we could pop that right in there. Now there's one final thing to do in the for statement, and it is array length minus minus. Because next time it goes around, the i will be the number one. And let's see this with the matrix. So the first time it went around, the i was zero and array.length was two, meaning this is what we got. The zero array at two. The second time around, we're going to have i at one and array.length is going to be minus minus from two to one. So we'll get this one and then finally we'll have two and zero and we'll get this one. Now down here, we want to return the math.absolute. And you know what, I'll just grab that. Paste that in, and that's what we want to return. Let's test it with this one first. It gives us 15 like it should. Now the next one should give us 16 if it's done properly. And it is, perfect. So this is working properly now, and it could do any sort of matrix. You could do a thousand by a thousand, and you no longer have to hard code it with a thousand different pieces of data like so. Now let's do this one more time and we're going to do it with recursion. So I'm going to comment this all out again and I'll take this function, make one more for recursion. And remember this is not pure recursion. We're not going to have this function be recursive. We're going to use a helper function. So let's let a few of the things that we need in the recursion one. I'm going to change how we keep track of the diagonals. I'm just going to have one. And you don't have to do it this way. I just thought it'd be fun to see. Now when we let this diag, we have an array with two values in it, zero and zero. And we'll have i equals zero. And we'll have j equal exactly what we had before right here. I'm going to copy that down. Perfect. So we're set up here. We're holding both of the diagonals just an array right here. We have our i which needs to go up and our j which is our array.length which needs to come down. So let's make our helper function. Let's call it const helper. I'll do a fat arrow function for this one. It's going to take in the array. Now, if we'll do j is greater than or equal to zero. So anytime j goes negative, this can stop, this uh, for statement. 
So now what we'll do is we'll have our diag at zero. That'll be this position right here. Our diag at zero will plus equal ARR at zero I. Remember I is starting at zero and we're going to pop the uh, we're actually going to shift the beginning of the array off every single time. So array at zero will always be what we're trying to get through. So we have that set up. Let's do the same thing with our J. Remember that'll be at one and that'll be at J. Next, we want to do our, iter our iterating. So that'll be, let's do I plus plus J minus minus and array, that's what's being passed in, dot shift, which is going to remove the first piece of the array. Now that the first piece of the array is off, we're going to send back the array into this function again by calling it helper and giving it this array missing the first piece of the array. The first piece of the array would be this. This would be gone, and this is what would be left in this array here. So we did our entire if statement. Now we just need a quick else. And what happens in else is we're going to just return. We're going to stop doing this function. So after we hit the return, we can leave this helper function, which ends here. Okay, we need to first get into our helper function from our main function. So we're going to call it with the original array that we're passing in right there. And then we're just going to return our math.absolute. Okay, so let's take a look at this with the first. Oh, diag1 is not defined because I shouldn't have copied that. What it really needs to be is, I'm going to get rid of this for a sec, and diag at zero, and then diag at one, like so. Let's check that out. There we go, we have 15, and this one we know is 16. We have 16. So this is our first look at recursion. Let's walk through it one more time. So this is the part of recursion that gets a little confusing and we're using a helper function to make this a little simpler. We're going to let all of our variables outside of our helper function. This is the reason we'll have a helper function because our helper function will update these variables and keep on running itself. It won't reinitialize these variables. We wouldn't want that because we'd lose the values that we had here would just be zero and zero every time at start, and then it would add in a piece of the array, and then that would be reinitialized as we enter it again. So we're using the helper function to kind of stop that from happening. So our values are up here, and then we pass in the entire array to the const helper. Now we're checking if j, that's this one, is greater than or equal to zero. So once it is negative, it's no longer going to do this block of code. So this block of code is going to happen until j hits negative one. And what's going to happen after that is it's going to return. So while j is larger than negative one, basically, we want the diag at zero to plus equal array at zero i. And why can we always hard code this zero? We could hard code this zero because we're doing array.shift here. Now shift is taking the first piece of the array. So this is an array of arrays and it wants the first piece of it. It'll say, hey, at zero, that's you, shift. That means get out of there, it's going to delete it. Now the array being passed back to the helper function is only going to have this and this, meaning there's only two arrays, and array at zero is now going to equal u, the four, five, six. So that's what's happening right there. Now, when we finally hit our return here, we're going to have values here. We have this diag value, and we're going to have two numbers in there, the first one and the second one. So I'm going to do the math.absolute function by subtracting either one from either one and getting our return there. I hope this was kind of fun and maybe an intro to uh, coding exercises and how they could help you become a better programmer. Let me know if you like these and I'll keep them going on Sundays. 
And uh, I hope you guys have a great week and I'll talk to you soon.